This video is brought to you by Dr. Kristen R. Bromley's Guitar Method Book Series and Online Music Academy. Dr. Kristen Bromley, welcome to my online academy. It's so great to have you joining me here in these online lessons. This is lesson 18 in this series that is all about jazz guitar. I love jazz guitar, as you know, and I assume you do as well. I'm so excited to bring this course to you. Now, so far, we've worked on a lot of things. We've improvised with just chord tones over major six, dominant seventh, and minor seventh chords. We've applied that to tunes. We've also looked at some other things that we can do when we're improvising solos, some other melodic ideas. We've looked at shell voicings and how we comp in the Freddie Green style over different changes and the tunes that we've worked on so far. So lots of cool things and we have worked on some tunes and some melodies. In this lesson we're going to work on another improvisation technique, another thing we can throw in that's part of that jazz language. And this works over the major six chords. So we're going to be working with things that we've worked with before. Our two main arpeggio forms, which we have already done. And if you haven't checked out any of the previous lessons, you're probably going to want to check those out. But I do have it up here on, on the board as a review. So we're using two forms right now. These are getting us going, get us into this style, and then we'll learn more forms as we keep going. But the, the squares around the dots, those are where our roots are, and then the black dots help us find the rest of the chord tones. And we've done this in all 12 keys. For the major six chords, we've got these two arpeggios, and we've got the one on those higher strings. And I have explained how anything we do on the top string with this form that has that lowest root on the fifth string, we can also do on the low sixth string if we wanted to, but we mostly solo on the top string. We've looked at adding the second and the flat three to three and even going between the second and the third with that flatted third. Those are some of the things that we've worked on so far with our melodic ideas when we're improvising. I'm not going to go over those things again, but if you haven't seen those lessons, you may want to check it out. What we're going to work on is connecting step five and six, or those chord tones, with the chromatic pitch that is in between, the sharp five or flat six. This is such a cool cool sound. So this is totally in our jazz language, in the early style, and we also hear it later as we get into bebop, and then it'll come back in anything we do post bebop, because it's influenced by the bebop language, so we, we end up hearing those sounds get in there. So this is a super, super great one. They all are super great, I think, but this is a, this is a great one that I'm excited to have us adding in here. So I'm going to work on it with us, just on the top four strings because that's where we do most of our soloing. I've indicated the sharp five or flat six here on the board with the stars, so you can situate it in reference to the other things that we already know. So we've got the stars showing you where those are. And this one would be one fret higher than where our normal arpeggio is. But this works uh, really great when we're staying on those top four strings. It fingers really well, and it's the place where we probably would play this sort of thing the most. So if we just look here, starting, I'm gonna be in the key of C. And I'm just going to start and stay on these top four strings here. So my ring finger is on the C at the 10th fret. And we can just play that major sixth arpeggio as a review. And we can play that one all the way up to that high root. Now, we also can go down to the sixth and come back. So if we were to throw this pitch in here, it's five, sharp five, six, or we can go six, flat six, five. Doesn't matter. If I throw that into the arpeggio, just up to the sixth. I didn't play on that top string, but just that root three, five, sharp five, six, flat six, five, three, root. Just kind of want to get used to that. Get used to finding that sound. Once you've got that one found, take a look at the fifth string. Everything, of course, is a string higher. So if we do just in this position, we'll move to the key of F. My ring finger is at that tenth fret on the F. I've got my arpeggio up to that sixth. Now I want to connect the fifth and the sixth together by that chromatic tone in between. Let's go around the circle of force with this. We can just warm up. We'll just use that sort of as an idea just to kind of get our fingers with this. But I went root three, five, sharp five, six, flat six, five, three, root six, root. So it'll be just like that. 
on to the next one. So get that idea happening here for a second. One, a two, around the circle of force, that is. And I'm assuming you've been going through the series. So I didn't explain the circle of force again, though I have the root names up here on the board. And we know with these two forms, we can start in that, where we have that lowest root at the eighth fret for C, and then we move up to the fifth string there in, at the eighth fret uh, for F and move forms, and then we're down to B flat, E flat, A flat, D flat, and we can come up G flat, B, E, A, D, G, C. That's been explained in previous lessons, so I'm not going to go over that again, but we're going to work our way around that using that little idea through these forms. So you got one, a two, a one, two, ready, and. And we'll go up to F. We're down to B flat. Then up to E flat. Down to A flat. And D flat. You can go up to G flat. And B. just like that. So that gets an idea. Now you could play around with different ideas and take, you, take it around the circle of force as well. A couple things that I'm just going to point out here that are really idiomatic of the style of the early early like pre-bebop swing era kind of thing. It's really popular to go sharp five up to six up to that high root. So I'm back in C with my C6 and I'm just playing that. That sort of thing works really nice. Of course, you can't do that on the top string so much. But you can play in other ways. But this... Or... It's a pretty common sound. And we do that same sort of thing with the third. And we've already worked taking that third and starting with the flat of third up to it. Now, as we bring in all these different ideas... Adding this one is really fun. So we can just throw that in. So I'm going to go ahead and play over a backing track that is going to take us through all 12 keys. It'll give us eight bars on each chord. We've done this sort of thing before. So I'm going to improvise over the top, getting this idea in there, intermixed with some of the other ideas. So you can play right along and sort of intuitively pick up some of what's happening and you can try it yourself. You can also steal anything that I end up improvising, any licks that I throw out that you think are really great. You can just watch and figure those out. That's how we learn this language. So it's super fun. Now this backing track, of course, is available on the channel. So you can play along with it as much as you want with Without me playing over the top, just look under those jazz jam along backing tracks or down in the description below there's a link for finding this one. We're going to take this at about 121 beats per minute. There's also one that goes a little bit slower, 101 beats per minute, so if you want to go a little slower, that's available as well, and, the, and it's uh, there's a link down in the description below. And of course, you can find it on the Jazz Jam Along Backing Track playlist here on the channel as well. So, we're here and four and in the snare drum, and then we'll be in, and I'll help us keep track of what key we're in, but you can play around. I'm going to improvise some ideas using this new technique, and also incorporate ones that we've already worked on. So, it's going to be fun. Let's do it. So we're in C. Flat. 
快。super fun. I had fun. I love improvisation and so so many great things that we can work on getting into our playing and this idea here is a great one to be able to use. So play with it, have fun with it, find new ways to use it. Of course those backing tracks, that, the one that we just used, are available on the channel at the tempo we were doing it at and even at a slower tempo if you want to work it at a slower tempo and you can play along with me as much as you want and steal anything that I was improvising and playing there because that's all part of the game of learning the jazz language. Of course this could be worked in with any of the tunes we've done so far and the ones that we'll do in the future. So we've got Ellington's Train and, and the two different blueses, B flat blues for Charlie, F blues for Charlie. Those are ones we worked on so far that have some classic changes and you can apply these techniques to those and it's great so keep having fun with this now in the next lesson the next two lessons we're gonna look at two new options we have for playing over the dominant seventh chord so we're gonna work on some more improv techniques which is awesome and then we'll be working on more tunes and we'll continue to bring in more things all the time so keep having fun with this these lessons are coming out every Monday Wednesday and Friday of course there's technique Tuesday theory Thursday and just various things that come out on Saturday so lots of great things to be checking out have fun Fun, take care and we'll see you again. If you found this video helpful, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. For more in-depth lessons and to progress through a free guitar course, check out my Guitar 101 series on YouTube and my Guitar Method books, which all come with access to hours of in-depth video lessons. You can find more information about me and my products at kristenbromley.com. Take care.